Hello everybody and welcome to my video uh, for uh, healthier tips for um, the new year to try and get you focused on healthier choices around meal times and uh, really happy to be here as part of the GRE to be community. So my first tip is about breakfast. So tip number one is about breakfast time and Try not to avoid eating your breakfast because it will set you up for the day. And a good rule of thumb is to make sure you're getting um, a, a hit of protein when you're eating your breakfast, whether it's going and getting some nuts and seeds um, with some good healthy avocado into your smoothie, eating a bit of uh, leftover meat or fish from the night before, um, even getting a good healthy mix of oats buckwheat and quinoa grains together because that's about one third protein and that will help sustain you longer throughout the day and reduce your uh, need to snack um, mid-morning and leading up into lunchtime for blood sugar balancing. Good old eggs as well, can't beat a few eggs for breakfast, so versatile whether they're poached, fried, uh, baked in a dish in the oven or in an omelette. Um, I like to do a nice Spanish omelette sometimes because I can go and put in chopped up vegetables that I have left over from uh, other meals and even some cooked potato and cook that off and eat that either for my breakfast or even lunchtime. Um, or if you're having something like a granola or a muesli, I like this one. Uh, I get this one in Aldi and it's only got 1.8 grams of sugar uh, per serving of this particular granola and so try and keep your sugars down and your proteins up for breakfast time because eating big bowls of sugary cereals is only going to spike your glucose levels floating around in your blood so as you go throughout the day and um, you're starting the day with higher blood sugar levels and that's not a good way to start your day and my second tip is that you need to um, try and just have two hits of caffeine a day, whether it's tea and coffee, a combination of both, just teas, just coffees, um, two per day. In Ireland, we love to have a load of tea and coffee throughout the day, especially in these times of um, COVID. So um, after that, you you know, try and something like a rubash tea, if you still want a bit of tea taste uh, without the caffeine, rubash or redbush tea, or something like um, a green tea. There is a little bit of caffeine in there, but it's higher in antioxidants, so it's better for you. So tip number three is try and incorporate some herbal teas. If you reduce your caffeine, try herbal teas. There are lots and lots of different ones out there, so there's a, a taste to suit everybody. And the good thing about herbal teas is that it goes towards your daily allowance of water and you should be aiming to about a liter and a half of water a day. So if you get yourself a herbal tea, whether it's a loose one like this, I'm using an old coffee pot there to do it. Uh, simple as that. And I will drink that, get two or three mugs out of it. I might even top it up again. So uh, do your herbal teas every day. Nice soothing ones for the evening or nice fruity, livening ones during the day and also they have a function as well so they're going to offer nutrition and they're going to help you as well with whatever you need it to do uh, whether it's calming or uplifting or might even be soothing the tummy and then uh, alongside that then incorporate your water so if that's about half a half a litre of water then alongside that incorporate another litre of water throughout your day and you will increase that then as you're getting more active to two litres of water a day. So tip number four is about carbohydrates. So this is where we get most, most of our energy from. So when it comes to carbohydrate foods, they're broken into starchy foods and sugar foods. I'll get to the sugar foods later, but starting with the starchy carbohydrates, brown is always the best way to go. So throw out your white pasta, and your white spaghetti and your white noodles and replace it with brown pasta, brown rice and something like tricolor quinoa. All of these grains are higher in fiber, B vitamins which are really important for energy and mood and higher in things like magnesium, iron and copper. Um, among other minerals. The Japanese 
use brown rice when they're sick for its healing powers. So that will tell you how much nutrition is in the brown rice. And if you're not used to using brown rice, start with half and half with the brown and white, and then eventually over time, then increase it to three quarters, and then eventually you'll be eating the brown rice. And it actually has a good bit of flavor off it compared to white rice once you're used to it. And the same with the pasta. Cooks in pretty much the same amount of time, but you're getting far more nutrition in this bag of brown pasta than you will do in a bag of white pasta that you get inside in the supermarket. So it's a very, very good change to make. Um, quinoa, if you haven't cooked with it before, quinoa is uh, from South America and it's one third protein. So it's going to keep you fuller longer, like I was saying for breakfast. And the, it can come white, but I like to go for the tricolor one because it's got a bit of brown in there as well. Uh, so you're gonna get more fiber out of that. And um, it's going to cook in about 12 minutes. So if you're stuck for time, it cooks really quickly. And you can also use it instead of breadcrumbs in burgers, or um, it's lovely in a salad to mix to a salad. Um, and it's really, really versatile for lots of different dishes. So you can Google it and find loads of recipes out there uh, for quinoa. So moving on to those sugary carbs that I was talking about there. Um, when you're sweetening your dishes, um, if you use things like local honey, not only will it have the sweetening effect, but also it will have the local antibodies so it will help you to keep your immunity stronger. So I'm a big fan of local honey if you can get a good one locally in your market. Or sweetening with maple syrup because there's very little has been done to that maple syrup to get it out of the tree. Um, so it, it's not a very processed sugar. Or um, if you have a family history of diabetes, a lot of people use xylitol. Um, and it's granulated but it's quite expensive so it's not a choice for everybody so xylitol if you've got blood sugar issues or stevia stevia comes from south america as well just like the quinoa and this is it in its natural form and you can make a little herbal tea out of that and use that to flavor your drinks and your stewed fruits and different types of cooking and um, even to sweeten your savory foods as well when you're making your tomato sauce and this is what you might see in the store is that one's from Aldi and that's um, it in its, its dried form and powdered form. So that is a natural sweetener that some people use. So stevia or if you're baking, good old blackstrap molasses, very high in B vitamins as well. So not only is it going to sweeten, it has a particular flavor, but it's high in those B vitamins. And some of you may notice things like organic coconut sugar in the shops as well. Um, good for baking, especially if the recipe calls for brown sugar, um, higher in antioxidants, so it kind of goes around cleaning up the body and it's a better uh, sugar option. And the other thing that people don't realize is that exercise is very important for blood sugars because the cells in the body, if you're not exercising and moving your body as much as you can, the cells sort of, um, the gateways of the cells close and then that glucose doesn't go into the cells and get used, kind of turns in itself. So exercise helps to keep everything open and moving and healthier. My sixth tip is use the internet to your advantage. You're obviously on the internet now watching this video, but there's lots of great resources out there that you can use to get free workouts, recipes, um, talk to people of a similar mind about a healthier outlook. There's even free apps out there where you can um, count how many sugars you're having a day. You know, are you getting enough protein in your diet? Are you eating too many carbohydrates? So things like that. So you, you can use it to your advantage and don't be checking out Dr. Google too much for things that you don't need to know about. Um, if you can incorporate three 30 minute exercise sessions into your week, that will help to keep the body moving and grooving. And my next tip for you is to get a bit of sunshine. I know we live in Ireland, sunshine is not something that we get that much of, but there is a little bit out there. And when it does come out, layer up and off you go. There's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. So you need that vitamin D into your skin to get out there and get some fresh air and some sunshine. Aim for seven portions of fruit and vegetables per day, seven as a minimum. Now that may sound like an awful lot, but if you are 
eating um, a salad or a, a wrap or something for lunchtime and you're putting in some leaves in there um, a good bit of grated carrot tomato cucumber that kind of thing then you're getting at least two portions of vegetables in there and then having at least three vegetables on your plate at lunch at uh, dinner time i always tell clients make sure that your plate is at least one quarter green if you stick by that rule it's a lot easier to get the greens in for their magnesium um, iron folate um, and other fiber and nutrients that you need um, so always get green on your plate and uh, my next tip is when you go shopping always plan um, don't go shopping on an empty stomach because you're going to buy the crap um, plan ahead do one maybe two big shops a week and then always think at least another meal ahead because you can use leftovers from the night before for the meal the next day for lunchtime where you can judge up uh, something into your lunch box um, like the quinoa I mentioned you could chop some um, vegetables through that piece of fruit on the side a slice of turkey or a piece of fish uh, tuna sardines or something like that and so you got the dinner the night before and then the lunch box the next day so always plan ahead no planning equals bad snacking my last tip is to season light to season right you can take it out but at least you can add a bit more if you taste something and it feels a little bit of extra something so i always use the himalayan pink salt or a good quality sea salt um, and i'm a big fan of your seaweed seasoning um, there's lots of great ones here that are harvested off the Irish coast especially here in the west of Ireland so a seasoning of that every day on your food um, will give it a bit of flavour without making it fishy but it will also increase um, iodine there which we're very deficient of in Ireland believe it or not um, so a sprinkle of seaweed every day and that and then I also use my bullions and powders then as a seasoning as well and the less salt that you put in, the, 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 more, the less your body needs and your palate gets used to it after a while. Don't put the salt cellar on the table. You can put the pepper on if you want, but not the salt cellar on the table. So um, season well while you're cooking and that should be enough to go forward from that. Using things like your, um, your, your little veg cubes or a sprinkle of bullion. I use this one quite a bit. Or there's lots of other good ones out there and they would be you know lower in salt than the average bullions and with less chemicals and preservatives in there um so yeah try those little tricks and see how you get on and i'll be very interested to see to hear how you get on you can make a comment um in the box below and uh thank you for and have a good day